scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Until a society upholds belief systems that promote integrity, respect and honor, gratitude, diligence, humility. These are priceless virtues that, that make every society civil. And you see, I told you that when people act, the problem is not what they did or what they do. The problem is the belief system that informs that. That is what must be corrected. Are we together? I was so touched when our father came and was challenging the men over our children and so on and so forth because the the narrative we have received in africa is that the cane is the only way of talking to a child so if the child does something wrong he just knows that he just had moments of pain and that's it and there is no communication our mentorship systems are poor in africa people are largely left on their own to scrounge their way the bible says in jeremiah 6 and verse 16 it says stand in the way write that ancient part and says it says ask and when you find it that good way walk ye in it our mentorship systems in Africa are very poor. The average young man has a lot of finding out to do about his life. So by the time you are 25, by the time you are 30, you are still confused as to what your life would be about. And then sadly speaking and respectfully so, many loved ones and parents are now hoping their children figure out what this life is about and remedy for their own mistakes. So the average young man in Africa does not have the leverage of wisdom the leverage of experience in a very specific way. And this is something that must be corrected. Do you know what it means to get born again at age 30? It looks young, but that's not an advantage. You've spent 30 years in confusion, gathering all kinds of error in your mind. Now you get born again at age 30 before you argue about the Holy Spirit and receive his ministry. And then if you are fortunate to be under a mentor that now teaches you well, it takes time to know God. It takes time to understand the principles of the kingdom before you start using them. When we give birth to children from age 2-3, they start going to school immediately. But we delay their salvation till they are 30 and they are 40 and then you are we blessed transformation when an armed robber now watch this as we're seated here talking someone is planning to rob this night i hope you are aware now let's go into the mind of that thief now by this time what exactly is he thinking because remember, the armed robbery will happen maybe 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. God forbid. We are going to pray against that. But I'm saying right now, someone is sitting quietly in his house. And an ideology is making him believe that you are so, you are so valueless. You do not have anything that you can exchange for a reward. And the only way is to pick up a weapon and go and harass a dear family and try to attack their sacrifice their rewards for years imagine the thinking that convinces a man to actually carry a rifle 
and jump a fence. The same rigor it takes to jump that fence is the same rigor it takes to read a book. And yet he would prefer to go through the risk of the cold. Do you know the level of intelligence it takes to steal? Ideologies. When a young boy stands before his father and mother and says, I'm 18, don't talk to me. You are stupid um, father or you are stupid mother. Forget what the mouth is saying. Think about the mind. Something has been sold. There is a context that has been given. He's, someone has helped him define masculinity. That for you to be rated as a strong man, that, that masculinity is, is, is proportional to rebellion. Society mocks those who are obedient. They look at men who are obedient to parents and the nobility of honor. They say you are weak, you are cheap. They, 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 they make people feel bad for being obedient. The more you are rebellious, the more you are strong-hearted and strong-headed, they say that's excellent. There is a problem, oh. If we do not understand this and rise, there will come a generation that will erode every value that keeps society strong. Hallelujah. And so, the spirit of the Antichrist works this way. It will work through government of nations. It will work through policy makers. It will work through different people to enact programs and principles that create loopholes that continue to encourage these kinds of things. Satan is very long term. He's not thinking five years. He's thinking 15 years. He knows one day those who hold these values will die. So he can't stop them from holding their values but he knows that time will erode them out of the scene. So he would rather come to our children and start growing with them. I want to say this respectfully. This is what has happened to the western nations. Their parents and all their fathers who were doggedly committed to the Christian faith. The devil knew that I can't make mama to backslide at this age. So he said, you know what? I know she will die in 20 years, but I can grow with the child. Now the children are now the presidents and the governors. And we are there wondering how to change. Whoever was there for you when you were rising is the one you will be loyal to at the corridors of power. Believers cannot come and want to own a stake in lives they did not invest in. You didn't preach to me when I started my journey. It was an atheist that encouraged me to rise to become a professor. And now I'm sitting as the head of an institute. That institute will be subscribed. It will work as a reflection of my belief system. And now here comes Christians. And we want to just take ownership and have a stake in the life of that man. And he says, where is your history in my life? Transformation. The process that makes you like Christ in experience. Sustaining superior belief systems. Hallelujah. I told you yesterday, when a man beats his wife, the hand is innocent. The hand only obeyed the mind. Something about his belief system, maybe culturally motivated, taught him that when I beat my wife, she will respect me. Every man is a victim of his belief system. Please hear me. Every man. When we say respectfully speaking that our society is full of men, a combination of both responsible and irresponsible, no irresponsible man is irresponsible by default. Something about his belief system has encouraged him that God would do everything. Sir, the school fees of your children has not been paid. It's all right. God is faithful. I know my God. He will show up for me. And the man is sitting, crossing his legs and not doing anything and just wondering and knowing I know God. Just wait and see. It is dangerous for such prayer to be answered because that error now becomes a stronghold. When God comes as an act of his mercy for the sake of the children, we think it's an endorsement of our carelessness. Are we blessed? Mm. The hallmark of masculinity is responsibility.
I'm not a politician. I don't, I don't dabble into political affairs, even though I'm, I'm one person who is very vocal about people of influence. I don't run away from them. They are my friends because they need that, that dimension of kingdom. Uh, but it's amazing how many people cross their legs and expect government to do everything. It's amazing how, by government, I don't just mean federal government, government from their homes. My father, you see a young man of 30 years and he's angry and saying, my father did not give me pocket money. What for God's sake, what, what, what else is the definition of irresponsibility? Now, please, we'll apologize after the, the, the conference, but, but let's, let's, just, let's just get this thing. Please, don't, 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 I'm not being sarcastic. This is a shake-up. We call it the mandate. Now imagine, and, and uh, uh, let me encourage, let me encourage blessed people. Being blessed and prosperous is not a cause. Give your children room to understand the nobility of process. Just because a millionaire gave birth to a son does not mean he must become an irresponsible person. There are certain things to be withdrawn from him until he understands the nobility and the honor that comes with process. Sometimes when, when things come too easy and too cheap, they give us an aberrated view of life. It is that impatience that has led to what our young people have today. We want to get everything overnight. It is one of the reasons why we have no honor for great people. Because we are not even interested in their story, their pain, and their history. We've been taught that there is an easier route to carry their 35 years and put it in one month. Favor does not lead to foolishness. Are we blessed? So we watch someone and we say, ah, this man is a millionaire. Most likely he is a thief. And then the challenge is that that man, respectfully speaking, will give his son access to those millions. And the narrative the son will take to his friends is, you see how easy life is. I mean, life is so easy. I don't know why you are trying to look for a job. How much are you earning? 200,000. And he laughs it over with sarcasm. Those his peers will go back and say, whatever it will take to enter this realm, tomorrow's realm today. The law of process. The Bible will often say, according to the time of life imagine a woman who just gives birth and you're a doctor and the child just gets up just jumps and teeth just comes out and he's ready to no Luke chapter 2 and verse 54 very touching statement and Jesus grew and Jesus grew Jesus grew Luke chapter 2 and verse 52 and Jesus grew if Jesus grew, everybody must grow. Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and with men. Hallelujah. Transformation. Where do our beliefs come from? Number one, our beliefs come from culture. Our cultural experiences. We come from different parts of the world and every culture sustains a set of values, a set of beliefs. A number of them are kingdom compliant, but many of them have come from tradition, superstition, and interaction with spirits. We must sustain the intelligence to edit the belief systems that we have gotten from culture, referenced to the word of God. And that any one of those belief systems that does not square up with the counsel of God, we must have the unashamedness to drop it. Are we together? Yes. Number two, very quickly, where do our beliefs come from? Our past experiences. The past is wonderful, but it can be dangerous. Chances are that most people, most marriages, most organizations are products of the pain and the past of people. It's wounded people that wound others. Is hurting people that hurt others. People transfer their miseries and begin to look for those to bring that to. Someone comes into a company and he's angry and victimizing everybody and now says, look, I didn't have it easy myself. So what? Are we together now? Our past experiences. Number three, our association. There is no man that outgrows the power of influence. Everybody is being influenced every time, every day. 
There are people who were wonderful people until they met a set of friends, until they met groups. And now we're not just talking of young people. Respectfully, at any age, there are groups and systems and structures and, and relationships that can be pungent to our values. Hallelujah. The man used to be a responsible man, saving money and taking care of his family until he got to a group of friends who are extravagant and lavish and he lost the nobility and the honor of saving and taking care of his family. Love is a command. Association is not. You have the power to choose friends and you have the power to change if and when those relationships are no longer profitable for where God is taking you to. There's no such thing as we're born from the same uh, neighborhood. No. Belief systems. I came from a background that had very well-meaning people. I saw people who were religious and they loved the Lord with all their heart. But I was concerned about the widespread rate of the irresponsibility of the men. Now, I say this lovingly, but I noticed that it was a trend across that horizon that it looked like people didn't seem interested in aspiring to produce a life that was worthy and noble for their families. And it didn't seem like it was, there was any problem. And I traced and I found out it was the imbalance of the evangelical context of Christianity that was received in my region. That's where the problem came from. That when the missionaries came, because most of them would come and go, some of them would come and die. So the scope of the Christianity they gave us, especially around the Middle Belt and the North with, with a bias for my region, um, you know, it was just the fact that, okay, you need to give your life to Christ, be morally sound and make heaven. And that was wonderful, but that was only the parts they could bring. But that was not all there was. So the average man who would give his life to Christ and love the Lord and just hold some level of morality felt he was fine. And yet the children are dying. They never had the privilege to go to good schools that would give them the leverage that their peers would have. And we think it was not a problem. Our greatest consolation was the fact that one day, no matter what, life will be over. But if it takes 80 years for that life to be over, you will punish yourself and punish your family. Hallelujah. So a woman could be sick and maybe the husband could say, no problem, don't worry. If God does not heal you, who am I to heal you? And he cannot get up and go to the hospital. See, so some of those ideologies kept endorsing irresponsibility. This is why the pulpit is very powerful. It's a mind control platform. Africa is a very religious continent which makes it easy for our transformation if the leaders and those who are the communicators of those values are sound themselves. Because the average African sits under the mentorship of a spiritual leader of some sort at least once or twice every week. And that means that as men and women of God and as spiritual leaders, we have a responsibility to be contributors to national development by helping to influence the mindset of people. It is my desire and my proposition that a time will come where the great companies in Abuja and this nation will want men from family worship center. Do you know why? Because the mentorship here has already reduced their work. That the average man who comes has been enlightened enough. I made up my mind as a man of God that I was not only going to focus on the spiritual development of people. I will prioritize it but the scope of my mentorship will not end there. It will be wickedness. We must embrace the whole counsel of God and see that people are not only spiritual, but they rise to become tools, not only for kingdom come, but for national transformation. Are we together? A transformed mind. A transformed mind. It starts from home. He starts everywhere. He steals a piece of meat and goes caught free. And someone sees him and laughs it over and says, you stubborn child. And you do not know something is growing. That is, that, is, that is a potential leader who will loot and steal the treasury. 
Are we together? There is a lot of honor. People cut corners everywhere. Time to write exam and someone is not around. Another person comes to write the exam for the person and the person is smiling with pride. Now, I'm not, I'm not just trying to be sarcastic. These things are very serious. I'm saying that attacking the individual problems will not solve it. We have to go back to the belief systems. I'm a student of history. And when Adolf Hitler was going to raise a rebellion, one of the things he did was to focus on the mindset of the people. He indoctrinated them and made the Germans believe that they were the most superior race on the earth. It started subliminally until it became a stronghold. And the average German believed that every other nation was under... And this is the same thing that has happened to us in Africa. There is an indoctrination that has made an average African believe I'm a second-class citizen. And so we carry that mindset. We, we, we carry a fascia of, of, of boldness. But the truth is that intrinsically, we have not believed that we can rise to become global in scope. Whether in ministry, whether in politics, whether in government, thank God for the individuals from the soil of Nigeria and Africa who have defied this narrative and are showing the world the possibilities that can come from this continent and from this nation. The Bible says the same Lord is rich unto all. A superiority mentality is not an arrogant mentality, but that there is a healthy sense of confidence that the difference between any two people is not, is not, is not their linguistic oratory, it's the quality of their minds. That no matter who stands before you, you are only inspired, not intimidated. Because transformation and growth is a possibility at any level. That means what I did not know yesterday, I can know tomorrow. Please say after me, in the name of Jesus. Say it again, in the name of Jesus. I obtain grace to be transformed. Our mindsets can limit us. Our mindsets can make us poor. We have all kinds of narratives. Oh, poverty is all right. It makes you calm. It makes you humble. I can tell you that narrative is not only, it's an evil report, like that report of the spies. I'm, not, I'm, I'm trying not to go ahead of myself. But there are many things that we have received. Now, please, don't get angry at um, whatever those following, maybe your pastor in the church you attend. Don't get angry with your parents or the leaders that were not able to give you. They, are not, they did their best with what they knew to do. But you cannot remain at that level. And in this conference, in the name of Jesus, God is shaking off mindsets. I'd like you in one minute, if you can, please lay your hands on your head and say, Father, every belief system that I have received that is not profitable for kingdom come, is not profitable for my spiritual development, and is not profitable for national transformation. In the name of Jesus, I declare that it is pulled down. I declare that it is pulled down. I declare my unwillingness. Hallelujah. That's right. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. We know there's more that's found in you. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. I know there's more that's found in you. Regardless my background, this is my commitment. And I will never settle for less. I know there's more that's found in you. In ministry, in business. And I will never settle for less when i know there's more that's found in you please sit down listen i had the privilege to be greatly mentored by dr miles munro of blessed memory and i pray for an opportunity to stand before him in heaven and say thank you sir that you were born my life is largely a product of his mentorship. 
I thank God for the quality of information that came from him, his materials. The night he died, I was at a conference somewhere in the south-south. And I got up that morning with a text and I was told that this great transformer who has shaped the mindset of nations, he was an advisor to more than 16 presidents, yet a kingdom man. He showed me a dimension of ministry that the scope of my relevance should not end in the pulpit. If I can only talk when I'm holding a mic, then I'm a failure. I should be able to talk to government. I should be able to stand before a parliament and communicate kingdom values intelligently without fanatism. I saw the value of transformation in the life of this great man. And when I was told that morning he had gone to be with the Lord, I sat on my bed and tears came out of my eyes. And I said, Dr. Miles, even though you are dead, you still live in us. And we will become promoters of your ideologies. We will cause the governments of nations to see that Christianity is not a nuisance to civilization. Please listen to me. If there is anything you have seen in the life of this man that stands before you that is noteworthy, it is number one, a product of the grace of God, fellowship with the Holy Spirit, but it is also a product of sustaining superior beliefs. There is no magic about influence and greatness. It is a product of beliefs. Our beliefs are the ladders that we climb to rise to positions of notoriety and power superstitiously wishing that God would just leave. Do you know that there are certain levels of influence if you don't rise to God cannot use you beyond certain levels? Let me give you an example. In the land of Egypt, Joseph had the ability to interpret dreams. He was about the most spiritual man there, but he did not have the influence to execute what God would give him. So God had to make do with the Pharaoh. That's why Pharaoh had the dream. The dream did not come from Satan. It came from Pharaoh because he was the only one who had the influence to make whatever God. God was trying to redeem his people from famine that was coming. But imagine that Joseph was the one who had that dream. What difference would it make in a prison? So your rising is giving God space for his purposes to be established. Look how God had to make do with heathen kings and people in the Bible because they were the only ones who had access to the corridors of power and they could execute his plan and his purpose. Do you know what it means for God to find enlightened people? You see, the excellency of the anointing, by the grace of God, I'm a student of the spirit. And I have learned by experience that the true potential of the anointing is seen when it comes upon an enlightened mind. Enlightenment gives credence and it, it allows the potential. Let me give you an instance. Do you know there are people today carrying certain anointings that many of our fathers of blessed memory had but those people did not have the opportunity to be enlightened so we did not see the full scope of what that anointing could do because the anointing is limited to your belief now when an enlightened mind carries that same anointing it can allow all the multifaceted dimensions of it to find expression we need to be enlightened we need to go for knowledge I submit to you that there is a lot of laziness in our territory. Our passion for entertainment, respectfully speaking, has outweighed our passion for knowledge and the discipline of growth. The average young man is concerned about just enjoying himself, no knowledge. A young man will sleep from, from 8 o'clock till 10 o'clock in the morning. You cannot be great that way. God is not unjust. Are we together? And it's unfortunate for the narrative that has been given, especially for many who want to get into ministry. Because we've been given a narrative like ministry is just a cheap route to success quickly. When you fail in every other area, just be a minister and you can get honorarium, you can get money, you can get tight. It's a dangerous narrative. I told you yesterday that the miraculous will attract multitudes 
but it is your wisdom attracts that attracts kings most kings are not in need Do you have what it takes to be able to sit with politicians and talk about the counsel of God and guide them in wisdom and discretion? In the Bible, there were people who would run to the prophets and say, my father, give me counsel. Can we, can we be that transformed that people want to sit close to you because the opening of your lips is the effulgence of wisdom? Can your words be that expensive? Can it be paid for? Are we blessed? Transformation. We have to be transformed. This church and the anchor men are a product of the level of transformation that they have contended for. No wonder God has honored this church with such caliber of men of influence. It's not magic and it's not a mistake. It's a product of transformation. Because the same Lord is rich unto all. Before I come to our fathers, please let me talk to every young man here. While sitting down listening to me, enter a covenant with your destiny today at this conference that I will not be small. Amen. You must you make up your mind. For some of you, that may mean avoiding premature manifestation and go back to the drawing room of your destiny and say, I have to start again. The social media sadly has become a place where people market falsehood all around. Rather than sitting down, why fake what can be real? Can I tell you this? I tell you sincerely and with every sense of humility, Society was designed to honor those who have really paid the price. Do not think there is no space. There is still space for great people. Young or old alike. For the Bible says, neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel. Do you know why there are very few people who are being celebrated? Because they are, they are truly the few that are paying the price. There's God's justice system. He's the supervisor of the laws he created. If you are truly diligent, I guarantee you, eventually the world will discover you transformation you have to go back to examine your belief systems your belief systems why do I feel embarrassed greeting an elderly person something about your belief system are you seeing that now would it be better people have gotten jobs just for having the character trait of honor good afternoon mommy uh, how are you? You are a nice young man. Uh, you are not at work today. Well, mommy, I'm still trusting God. You mean it? See me tomorrow. That's it. Whereas an, another arrogant prayer warrior can be moving around, passing his breakthrough every day. Now, I'm not being sarcastic. No, I'm not. When I stepped into this place, I took out time to honor our mother. I came, I honored the, our father. Most of you will see me stand here and just greet them and all of that in your mind. You are saying, ah, it's not necessary. Could that be why you are where you are? Have you learned to see that greatness is not cheap? Do you have in your belief system the construction to honor sacrifice? I never see great people and pretend they are not there. Greatness is hard at any level. Are we blessed? Transformation. And I believe we can sustain superior beliefs. Two keys I will give you for transformation. Number one, you want to be transformed, you must recognize that your current belief systems are limiting you. An unashamed recognition that your current belief systems may be limiting you. It is true. Do you know, I am so passionate about the areas of ignorance in my life. 
I thank God for what God has done and is doing in my life. But I continue to ask the Lord, expose to me what I do not know. Thank God for what I know and thank God for the result it is producing. But what else do I not know about leadership? What else do I not know about, about um, ministry? What else do I not know about responsibility? Until you become a searcher, you will not find. The Bible says, seek and you shall find. It will not come to you seated. So there has to be a recognition that there are every result that you desire in your life, there is a belief system that controls it. Merely wishing for that result. I want to become a kingdom millionaire so that I can supply resources. Very, very good desire and a very good mandate. But there is a belief system. There is a construction. There is an understanding that sponsors that. The captains of industry are not there as figureheads. In most cases, their sacrifice and their belief systems took them there. And they have the intelligence to defend what God has given them there. So number one, you must recognize the need and you must keep that need ever before you. Do not allow any level of success to peg you. Number two, you must contend for quality information from the life of those who have results. When you want to become transformed, you must keep biases aside. Because you will be forced to read material sometimes of people you do not like. But if they have the results that you desire and the results are kingdom compliant, then you must drop your ego and get it. Oh, I don't like this professor. I don't like this author. I don't like this commentary. I don't like this, 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 this dissertation. I don't know who. You have to just submit yourself and listen. Hallelujah. When you go to a very good restaurant to eat, you don't say, who cooked this food? When you, the person who cooked it is, is, is almost none of your business. You just see the presentation, you like it, and you can eat or bring your guests. That's how it is. Every result is governed by a belief system. Apostle, I want to become an exceptional. I notice my company has been nose diving. I once was doing well, but things are not working well. I understand and we are going to pray. But much more than just prophetically speaking, there is a belief system that must be introduced into your understanding from a corporate standpoint. It may mean going to study other related companies to find out how they are thriving through storms. Are we together now? It may be that you, you, you may need to be part of other superior associations that are profitable. There are many steps to take. But it starts when you realize that you must grow. I don't only study the Bible. I study relevant materials that are kingdom compliant. Because it's not only Christians I'm talking to. It is my goal to be able to talk to any class of people and communicate the intelligence of the kingdom from a psychological standpoint, from a spiritual standpoint, from an intellectual standpoint, from a sociological standpoint. I want to give God as much space as he can find in my life to be glorified. And I will not limit him with my arrogance and my ego. Are you willing to go that far? If we came for this conference to be transformed, then here is something that is blessing us. Transformation. You are a pastor, you are a man of God here following online. I beg you in the name of Jesus, please sit down and study. Please sit down and study. Please sit down and study. Just waiting for invitation and waiting for people to clap for you for nothing. Human beings are not stupid. Not everybody is a fool. People will not invest time and hours and their reputation to sit down and hear nonsense. No. We must trust God for grace. The grace that gives us the intelligence to speak to kings. When you serve kings, you will receive the reward of kings. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Transformation. Buy the truth. Sell it not. Buy the truth. Reduce recharge card and buy books. Reduce excessive clothes and buy materials for heaven's sake. 
Sit down. When people are snoring, you are praying. Lord, I know that my world will hear me and it is for the sake of your glory. Sleep, slumber, wait. I will attend to you in the future. For now, there is a generation that wants to hear God's counsel in my lips. And while you are saying that God, who is a supervisor of his laws, is watching you where you are. I made up my mind as a personal commitment that every area the Lord would want me to be relevant, whether it is in ministry, in leadership, whatever area, I will strive to get to the zenith of my competence. It is still my aspiration and I am honored to see the fruit of the little that I've done so far. But I know there's more that's found in you. Refuse to settle for less. Don't be as we call it a local champion. Compare yourself with mediocres within your circle and clap for yourself to be the greatest among them. You have to begin to benchmark your success from a global reference. Is God speaking to us? Let's rush to the third key. Are we blessed so far? What is the third killer of dominion? It's called value and productivity. The third pillar of dominion, value and productivity. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 6. This was the first mandate given to man from scripture. The Bible says, and God said, Genesis 1 and verse 26, 26. It says, and God said, let us make man. Genesis 1, 26. Thank you. Let us make man. The word God there is Eloha, the singular. Elohim is plural. And God said, let us make man in our image, our karagma, our character. And after our likeness, our functionality. So let him think like us. Let him have our sense of intuitiveness. But then let him behave also. Let him function like us. And the Bible says let him have dominion, sovereign control over all of these realms. Go to verse 28. 28. And God blessed them and said, it's an instruction. Number one, be fruitful. Be fruitful. Be fruitful does not mean have children alone. Be fruitful means be productive. Are we together? Number two, multiply. Number three, replenish. And then subdue. So dominion has to do with being fruitful, multiplying, replenishing, and then subduing. Hallelujah. Very, very powerful. One more scripture. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 4. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 4. Productivity and value. The honor of diligence. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 4. It matters that we become a people who understand the power of value. He becometh poor, the Bible says, that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent make it rich please look at me i submit to you in the name of honesty that anybody who does not strive to be competent and valuable in today's world will be ready to sweep the floor of life are we together what does it mean to be valuable your value is a measure of your usefulness usefulness to god usefulness to society your value is a measure of your usefulness. Productivity, please listen. Productivity is the ability to develop your value to a point where it becomes needed and useful. Turning it into products and services that can be packaged with excellence and served to a targeted consumer base. This is productivity. It's good to be valuable, but don't just stop there. There are many people with potentials. You hear us talk a lot about potentials. Nobody is rewarded for having potentials. You are commended for having potentials, but your reward is based on your productivity. Nigeria is full of ideas. Nigeria is full of value, 
full of potentials. But you're, you begin to live a rewarded life to the degree to which you allow yourself to metamorphose to a point where your products, your value now is now translated. And by products and services, I'm not necessarily just talking about business in, its, in its, um, the generic form. Product and services, intellectually, whatever it is that you serve with excellence. Productivity. Productivity. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 16. The Bible says, The gift of a man maketh room for him. I wish I had time and we were not restrained by the COVID. I would have given you an illustration. I usually would line people here and show you that there's no space. But the Bible does not say the gift of a man gives him his space. There is no space anywhere. Your gift makes room. It pushes people until your space is created. That illusion that my place is there waiting for me is, is just, it's just sociological comfort. There is no space anywhere. It is your gift that allocates your portion. The gift of a man. The gift there does not just mean endowment from heaven because spiritual people will now say, you see, it's not me. Mm -mm. The value of a man. The value of a man developed and refined. Not just raw like that. People congratulate you for discovery, but they, they, they reward you when you refine it. Apostle, I can cook. Congratulations. Can kings eat your food? And it's just a talent within me. I don't know. It's, it came by itself. God honored you with his mercy. You did not develop it. He gave unto one five talent. He gave unto one two. When he came back and met them still looking at it like that, he said, you are an unprofitable servant. That means whatever God gives you, he should not meet it the way he gave you. Hallelujah. Please make up your mind that I will be diligent. In this conference, we kill the spirit of laziness in the name of Jesus. Mental laziness, physical laziness, any and all kinds of laziness. Make up your mind that I will be diligent. I will be diligent. Don't sit down and envy people who are rising and get angry and wish they fall to comfort you. No. Just trust God for grace to continue to contend. Hallelujah. Productivity and value vetoes tribal limitations. Productivity and value limits gender whatever kind of gender issues in society except you do not find exceptional people you will watch systems and structures bow and crumble to allow them rise this is true hallelujah make up your mind that you are going to be valuable let me show you one scripture first kings chapter 7 we'll read from verse 13 and 14 are you getting blessed First Kings chapter 7 from verse 13 and 14. First Kings 7 from verse 13. Now watch this. This was the building of the temple of Solomon. Solomon was building a temple for the Lord and then he was trying to get all the human resources that would be part of that temple. I hope you know he wanted to give God the best. Now let me show you how kings work because we are talking of influence. It says, and King Solomon sent and fetched Hiram out of Tyre. So he fetched a man called Hiram. Now look at the background. I love the Bible. It will go back and tell you the background of that person. What happened that vetoed this background? The Bible says Hiram was a what? A widow's son. That means he lost his dad. An unfavorable background. And of the tribe of Naphtali, his father was a man of Tyre, a worker in brass. And he was filled with wisdom and understanding and cunning to walk in all works of brass. And the king came to... And he came to King Solomon and wrought all his work. So what makes a widow's son to sit down and say, I do not just want to serve mean men. One day King Solomon will send for me 
and that guy continued to rise to be diligent to be competent to be productive and the news of his value got to the ear of solomon and solomon said send for him there are people in this country i submit to you who cannot go out of job for up to two months they are too competent to be ignored i know people in this nation respectfully speaking who are working in three places at their terms because they literally are the heart of that company if they cough the company will buy a pharmacy not a drug Why must you think about me when you are reducing people? Why should I be the victim of situations and circumstances? Make up your mind. Mediocrity is dangerous. I am telling you this. There is no group for mediocrity. It looks like there is a group till trouble comes. And you find out that there are only two groups. Complete failures or extremely competent people. Mediocrity allows you to vacillate around the corridors of both failures and successful people. And you may flatter yourself for many years thinking you are successful or you are a failure. But when the stakes are down, you will find out that you are either extremely competent or you are a complete failure. Make up your mind. Be valuable. For some of you, this may mean taking certifications and taking trainings go for it for some of you this will mean buying certain books go for it some of you this may mean furthering your studies go for it for some of you this may mean creating private mentorship sessions with exceptional people go for it for some of you this may mean making yourself the students of knowledge for a long time go for it we are not called to do everything but we are called to excel in that one area Amen. hallelujah Amen. to excel in that one area i made up my mind as a man of god and, and, and i'll say this humorously i made up my mind that by the grace of god i will never stand on any man's pulpit and preach and afterwards, they just clap and say, wow, that was nice. That's the door. Just go out and uh, one day, by the grace of God, in the name of the Lord, as, as we are paths cross again. No. I found out that there's no traffic with the stars. There is enough space. And do you know from anywhere you stand in the world, you see the stars? I may not see what is happening somewhere in my Tama right now because my view cannot get there but when it rises to the cloud everybody can see it you want to be seen by everybody don't pressure them to see you where you are there are too many obstructions on the ground rise <laughs> hallelujah i challenge the men in this great church both young and old, it's time to have a signature of competence within this assembly and from this assembly to this city and this nation. There is always room for more. In politics, in government, it doesn't matter what area. And by the way, let me respond to something that our mother was trying to say yesterday. I believe Christians can and should go into politics. I believe it absolutely i believe christians can and should go into business many of you have heard i'm sure of the concept of the seven mountains absolutely it should be there you see dominion over a territory is based on very defined structures they are not more than seven number one let me give it to us the first mountain mountains talk of spheres of influence according to micah chapter 4 micah chapter 4 and verse 1 you may want to write that down micah chapter 4 and verse 1 the bible says it shall come to pass in the last days please give it to us that the mountain of the lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and it shall be exalted above the hills and the bible says all people not christians all people shall flow to it verse 2 and many nations shall come and say come let us go up to family worship center and to the house of the god of jacob for he will what 
teach us his ways and we will walk in his paths. For the Lord shall go forth from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And so we know that there are seven mountains that control the activities of men on earth. Let me try to run them. I hope I remember all of them. Number one is called the mountain of religion. That is where the spiritual conviction of a territory is shaped in. Every territory has some sort of religious loyalty and religious affiliation. And there are people in our case now, we call them pastors, we call them priests and so on and so forth. They are mandated to shape the religious conviction of a territory. Number two, the mountain of family. Our father did enormous justice to that. Every arm robber came from somewhere. Every troublemaker came from somewhere. Are we together? And so it matters if we can salvage the destinies of people at that family unit, then we can be able to project a culture in society that brings glory to the name of the Lord. Family is very, very important. Very important. Number three, the mountain of education. This is where the intellectual convictions of people are being shaped. It is very important. Did you know that most of our children spend a major part of their life opening their spirits to their teachers for a very long time? Working by the 63-4 system. Imagine the amount of time in a young man's life uh, committed to listening to another voice. And it matters what we listen to. Hallelujah. It is the reason why we, we continue to trust God that God will grant grace that our schools will be model places that you can trust the, the kind of training that your child is receiving. Not just the secular curriculum, but inculcating these values also. Because the, the, the subject is not the only thing the child is learning. The child is also learning the attitude of his teacher. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So it's important, education, very important. Number what now? Number four, the mountain of politics and governance. It is my prayer that God will raise spirit-filled, anointed people, but intelligent people too. Most, I have observed respectfully speaking over the years, that most people who want to get into politics, who are of Christian convictions, do not stay to pay the price to understand the wisdom of operating in the cosmos. And so they carry the ideology of church and believe that the sphere of politics is like a Christian praying in tongues all the time. And they meet a rude shock. I've had the honor and the privilege of talking with a lot of politicians. And I can tell you, for many of them who are people of God, they think spirituality is always mentioning the name of Jesus in secular places. Not necessarily so. We're talking of having a kingdom sense. But look at Daniel. Daniel reigned through the dispensation of three kings and none of them could do without him. And yet his convictions remained. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. So it is important. I believe that believers should join politics. But I will tell you sincerely, if believers join politics just with the mindset of church, they are going to be in trouble. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the mindset of church, but there has to be that wisdom of being as sheep among wolves and being as wise as serpents the wisdom of living in the cosmos is different because not all men have faith there was a time that it was not paul's anointing that defended him it was his intellectual prowess he needed to outsource certain intelligence from the archives of the people within the territory so i challenge politicians and i pray that god will put it in the heart of someone to be able to have mentorship institutes for people who are prospective politicians so that right from the infancy of their ambition they begin to be mentored a non-partisan platform that begins to build people inculcating in them the mindset of leadership and governance
Many, many of the, 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 the I know that the, there are a few institutes here and there that may seem to talk about that, but now we're, we're talking of dealing with things from a kingdom perspective. Are we blessed? Politics and governance. One policy can frustrate your serving God forever. Just one. You can fast all you can, roll on the ground, but one single policy. Was it not because there came another Pharaoh who knew not Joseph? That was the beginning of the trauma and the captivity of the Israelites in Egypt. Joseph rose to a point of notoriety and saved his father and his brothers from hunger. And they came and lived in Goshen. And the Bible says that God honored, God honored um, um, Joseph so much. And he had the opportunity to marry the daughter of Potiphar, the priest of On. And then he became a great person. A name was given to him. And he ruled in justice and power. And God's people were preserved. Hadassah, the lady who we call Esther, it was her rising to the place of power that saved the Jews. Otherwise, there was a man there called Haman. Haman was not even a king. Haman was someone in the system who had an agenda to annihilate the Jews. But he took an Esther. Sometimes it does not take weapons. It just takes influence. The influence enough to be in the corridors of power. Please pray for politicians, especially those who are of the Christian faith, and encourage them encourage them are we blessed number five thank you the mountain of arts and entertainment this is where our idea about success and the celebration of it comes when someone wins and opens a bottle of champagne and pours it on his head you see your little child will go and carry a bottle of malt and pour on his own head too it's called influence the child is being mentored subliminally that you celebrate success by extravagance. And you will think this is just a little boy until you see what he does with your car. Until you see what he does with whatever it is that God has given you. It is important. Today, respectfully speaking, we have all kinds of narratives about success. And it came because the mountain of arts and entertainment has cultured us into thinking that the more expensive you are, the more successful you are. The more outspoken you are over several things, the more, you know, we have all kinds of ideas. There needs to be people there who God will help them. And when they are celebrities and the whole world looks at them, they can point them to Jesus and said, I'm not ashamed of declaring I've always said this, imagine if Michael Jackson said Jesus is Lord, even by mistake. He would have won more souls than many crusades put together. Influence is powerful. Do not, do not ignore the effect of the words and the life of a great man on many. You will be surprised to know how much people have been influenced. One day someone will stand and break his head in the front of people and you'll be surprised how many other people will break their heads. And while you are laughing and say this is sarcastic, you will be, influence is powerful. People will do what they see done in the life of great people. That's why God must take a lot of people who are his people to the position of greatness so they can demonstrate to the world how to celebrate from a kingdom standpoint. Hallelujah. By the time a man is being celebrated and the whole world is looking at him and waiting for what he will say and all his business associates and all the people within his sphere of influence, they are standing and watching and he tells them, let me show you how we celebrate God in this kingdom. We do it on our knees. Lord, you are the giver of every good thing. You cannot deny his success because the results are there. And so you will not know when you too, you will join on your knees. You were not supposed to kneel down, but his success forces your knees to touch the ground. Arts and entertainment. And then the last is the mountain of finance. Or media, really. The mind control system. 
you can hear one thing from a five minutes video that will take you two years of praying and fasting and deliverance to get out of your mind <laughs> let me tell you a humorous story my i hope i hope he's not listening to my father and my mom they are still alive and i'm just hoping he's not listening to you know one day my father was watching a program it was a health program and they were saying something about the disadvantage of was it cabbage or something and my father just called my mother and said i'm hearing that uh, something can happen to cabbage that can kill and i said ah mind control systems this is a man that has eaten cabbage for how many decades <laughs> <laughs> and now just uh, <laughs> are, are you getting are you getting it take it as a joke but now someone is in five minutes just saying something that came from a research and that's the end of it mind control systems <laughs> hallelujah the last is the mountain of finance this mountain is very peculiar because it controls other mountains. All other mountains need the products from this one. Our world today is economically driven. It's an uncomfortable truth, but it's so. Proverbs 22 and verse 2, and then also verse 7. The Bible says, the rich and the poor live together. It says, God is the maker of them all. Very, very frustrating statement. Why didn't he just say men live together and God made them? What sort of stratification is this? very very insulting ego stinging statement the rich and the poor they live together and then he says god is the maker of them all he never said god made them so god made men and they stratified themselves but that is not even the disturbing verse five verses later verse seven then the bible tells us let's go to verse seven please it says Is it verse 7? Please look. Huh? No, no, same scripture, 22 and verse 7. Read it if you're a Christian. One, two, read. Influence now. Uh huh. Hmm. The rich, anybody, will rule over the poor, anybody. The rich. So there is a relationship between wealth and dominion. The rich ruleth. The rich, look at the first three words. The rich ruleth. Leave the rest, just focus on the first three words. The rich ruleth. There is a relationship between the corridors of power and access to resources. Find a way of believing. Let's not feel uncomfortable about it. Remember we said kingdom now. For as long as believers keep being poor, mommy, there is a real problem. And when I talk of prosperity, I'm not talking of money to buy suits. No, no, no. If the only thing you have is money, you are not very wealthy. We're talking of access. We're talking of influence. But we're also talking of resources. The name of Jesus is very heavy. It takes resources to lift it very heavy as the anchor men's fellowship only god knows what he would have taken to put this program together only god knows it takes resources to train your child in a good school so that he's not corrupted by by the neglect that comes from the carelessness of you know many 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 uh, uh, platforms, educational platforms. There is a relationship between resources and peace. Yes, sir. When Jesus, when Jesus was preaching in a crusade, the tribute collectors came. Is that true? So every time you are serving the kingdom, who will come? The tribute collectors. And they came and said, you are preaching here and you've not paid tax. And Jesus said, mm -mm. Give to Caesar what belongs. I'm showing you how to be a peacemaker. Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God. So a peacemaker is one who has enough resources to give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God. 
Many believers have ignored it. Rent issue and house issue can erode your prayer life more than you know. You will be, you will be shocked and surprised that you are praying and you, can, you even forget that you are talking to God. These are believers in the name of honesty. Let us be very, very sincere. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God forbid, but there are people who have had issues with their health. And the amount that they spent within one month was probably someone's bill for a lifetime. Satan knows that whoever controls the resources makes the rules. We must trust God for grace to be able to rise to that position where he will grant us an opportunity to serve his purposes. Seven mountains. Let me just talk on one more area and we're done. Is that fine? So we spoke on our spiritual connection, transformation, diligence. Please be diligent in the name of Jesus. Make up your mind. Don't sit down wishing for resources to come. Don't sit down wishing to rise to a position of notoriety by default. Mm -mm. Someone met me one time and he said, can I imagine after suffering and going to school, nobody wants to employ me. And I, I spoke to him sincerely. I said, convince me that you are employable just convince me i give you five minutes say anything just convince me that you are employable and it wasn't to be and and you know you told, okay i read this and that i said no that's not the issue i only employ you to solve a need i don't employ you to honor what you read i employ you to solve my need so if your value is not needed and useful to me I appreciate your sacrifice, but clearly you are not going to get a job. It's one thing to be educated. It's another thing to be employable. And value can bring you to that point. Is God speaking to us? One more time, can you speak to yourself and say in the name of Jesus, the grace to be competent. Please pray. The grace to be competent. You will thank God for this conference and you will thank God for this session. The grace to be competent. The grace to be competent. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Competence is powerful. Jesus spent the first 30 years of his life preparing for a ministry of three and a half years. No wonder he succeeded. At age 12, when his colleagues were running around, he was in the temple learning from the scribes and the Pharisees. I can almost bet that he most probably would be one of the young people there. And from age 12, the Bible is silent about 18 more years in Jesus' life. We do not know what he was doing for those 18 years. But the next time he shows up, he's a 30-year-old young man. Having been baptized by John, he now began to teach what we call the Beatitudes. Introducing to them a kingdom. And he commanded such influence that the powers that be in those days, they were threatened by his existence and the power that came from him. Please be competent. You have a salon, trust God for grace that kings and the nobles in this city will come to your place. Are we together? You have a school, make up your mind that you will raise the standard to a point where everybody who comes out of your school will beat their chest and say God has done it. You have a business, make up your mind. Do not be satisfied making profits. Be satisfied making an impact. Let's talk on relationships. The fourth pillar. Let me a few minutes and then we're done. I really am trusting that in the name of Jesus after this conference there will be testimonies. We're going to pray shortly. But listen, it takes time to be great. The things that we're listening to now some of them may not be spectacular, but these are the systems 
if you ever are interested in rising to that position of influence for the sake of his majesty then pay attention to these truths they are not opinions every great man here will tell you that these are the keys the ladders relationships relationships are advantageous connections Everything on earth multiplies on the basis of relationships. Your resources even come out of your relationships. Please listen. It is your relationship with Jesus Christ that has secured your eternal destiny. That's how powerful relationships are. Just for ignoring a relationship with Jesus, you pay the price with your eternal destiny. It is our relationship with the Holy Spirit that supplies us the guidance and the wisdom, the direction that we need in life. It is our relationship with the Word of God that gives us the mindset of the kingdom. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. We are able to get the mind of Christ because we have a relationship with the Word. It is the relationship of a wife and a husband that produces the offsprings. It is a relationship between a man and his teacher that provides knowledge. Everything multiplies on the basis of relationships. The easiest way to become successful that I know is through relationships. Many of you who may have listened to my teachings, you've heard me say, who hates you in this life does not matter, but who likes you matters. Oh yes, it does. Please hear me, it does. A king rejects a woman and overnight she stops being queen. And the king likes another village girl and in an instant she becomes queen. Who likes you matters. The Bible even said when a man's ways pleases the Lord, God rewards him by making even his enemies to be at peace with him. Please listen to me. There are certain gatekeepers in the corridors of destiny that you cannot bind and cast. They are gatekeepers honored by God himself. How could Joseph have cast uh, Pharaoh? No, he couldn't bind and cast and say, Pharaoh, in the name of Jesus, get out of that position, I'm coming. It's a joke. He had to pray, God, give me favor with Pharaoh. There are people, the only way the gate is open is for God to make them like you. My life is a product of what it means when somebody likes you listen when God puts somebody in your life and puts people in your life they can accelerate your journey of decades in a moment and I mean it literally now we live in a very arrogant world where people always like to take the credits of their growth to themselves they always want to give a narrative like nobody assisted me. I pushed through by myself. Ask Jesus on his way to the cross. Your Jesus was so tired, he had bled, lost blood, and he fell and would have... If Jesus died on that ground there, he could not become seen. Because the law is that cost is the man who hangs on a tree, not dies on the ground. And Jesus needed a relationship with a man called Joseph of Simon of Cyrene. Simon carried the cross for him. Prophetically, that was Africa. Carrying that cross. Participating and helping Jesus to get to the cross. All men need men to rise, not just God. You need God, I, I agree. But when it has to do with the corridors of power and influence to fulfill this kingdom mandate, you also need men. Please may God deliver us from that illusion that makes us believe all I need is God. If you say that in terms of um, declaring the sovereign power of God, you are right. But if you say it to mean every man can go places, I will rise alone. Please wake up. Please wake up in the name of Jesus. We need men to rise. As politicians, you need a man to rise. As business people, you need a man to rise. The matters of your destiny can be at the mercy of a man's signature for years. 
Have you been taught that one of the ways God blesses men is by connecting them to other men? Favor relationships that sustain the ability to transit you to enviable dimensions. Someone is sitting here right now. It is not as if contracts have stopped. It is not as if employment has stopped. But for God's sake, you can be Joseph in the pit. But who is the wine presser that will speak to the king for you? Your value is needed in the palace. Your talent is dying in the pit. Between the pit and the palace, there must be one person. Please lend me your attention for the next 10 minutes because I want to share with you something that is a personal revelation God gave me. And it changed my life about men and relationships. When I found the key, I cried, I jumped, I said, I found something that can take me beyond my background. I found something. You know, the Bible says the kingdom is like a man who found a treasure. And sold everything he had to buy the whole land. Because there must be more there. Wise man. My life has changed. And continues to change. And I'm praying that in the next 5 to 10 minutes as I share with you this. Some of you while you are sitting you will be seeing the dots connecting. That truly it's time for me to live out this mandate. But this may be the reason why my family has been subjugated. This may be the reason why my business, my ministry has been down. So pray one minute. Open my eyes. Please pray. I assure you your life is about to change. Pray. I know your life will change. It's not, it's, I'm, I'm, it, this is no guesswork. The things that we have seen, the things that we have heard, even that which our hands have handled of the word of life, that is what we preach. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2. Jesus, open our eyes. Mark chapter 2, please. We have to pray. Let your spirit be open. We are soon going to pray in this place. I assure you that you are not going to go back the same way you came. We didn't just come here to receive an information. After you receive an information, there is always a grace that comes upon your life. That is the grace that makes what you have heard. To walk in your life. Information alone would only be a lecture. But there is an engracing of the spirit. Mark chapter 2 please. Help us media. And again he entered into Capernaum. After some days. And it was noise that he was in the house. Verse 2. And straightway many gathered together. In so much that there was no room to receive them. No. Not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. This is Jesus now. And they came unto him. Who are the day? The Bible does not tell us. They came unto him. Bringing one sick of palsy. Which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press. They uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up. They let down the bed wherein the sick of palsy laid. Five. And when Jesus saw their carelessness, and when Jesus saw their foolishness, he said unto the sick of palsy, Son, your sins be forgiven, and all of that, and all of that. Now leave it. Leave it there. The Bible lets us know that there was a man who was sick and had been desiring a miracle. That man was paralyzed, and he could not take himself there. But certain men came to his life and said, today you must be healed. They made it a mandate to carry him to a crusade ground. And when they saw the crowd, they said, we love you too much to let you go back. And we are going to pay for the roof we'll spoil now. Forgive us. But we are that desperate for this person to rise. The Bible never tells us their names. 
Yet the Bible does not ignore their insistence to see that that man is healed. Do you know that if they had left that man on that crusade ground and went back, they have tried. I hope you know. They would have tried. And I used, you too, you have seen. We tried. We came. The crowd is so much. Even us who have legs, we can't pass. Ladies and gentlemen, by this scripture, let me introduce you to a mystery that the Lord showed me a few years ago. It's called the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers. Please write it down. We are the gates of influence now. Mm. Hiya, hiya, ha, yeah, yeah, yeah. You will never be the same You've touched His grace Your life must change You Help that guy, please help that guy There's, oh my God, the COVID is there So hold on please, hold on, let me say this Hold on Please be sensitive, huh? you look at me Now please listen we have to observe the COVID. Um, um, my father is here and he heads this, so we have to be compliant. Now, two things I want you to do for me while I talk. Please help me. If anybody is under the anointing close to you, um, just hold the person there gently, yeah? Number one. Number two, please and please, in the name of Jesus, when it's time to pray, still do your best to observe the social distance. I don't know how you do it, but in the name of Jesus, there is grace for us. Are we together? So help that gentleman under the anointing there. What I want to share with you, if you will listen to me in the name of Jesus, you will come back and thank our mother. You will come back and thank this fellowship. Are we ready? Please sit down. Take it. The Bible talks about the ministry of men to men. The Bible lets us know that it is the cooperation of God and men that lift men. That men do not just rise because there is a God in heaven. Men rise because they are also men. God himself is not ashamed of his need for men. Hear what God, the almighty God says, I search for a man. His eyes are running to and fro, not looking for animals, looking for a man. For 400 years, the prophecy of the exodus of Israel in Egypt had come, but there was no man prepared enough. And 30 years had to be added to prophecy because a man was not ready. To the point that when it was time to save men, Jesus could not come as the God Jesus. He had to become a man. Today, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, not as a spirit. He went bodily and he seated as a man. Do you know why? so that he can come back again. The Bible never said the Father is coming back again. <clears throat> if Jesus went back as the Spirit, he would not be able to come back again. So he went back, this same Jesus. Are we not Bible students? That he will come back the same way he left. Hallelujah. So it takes God and men for men to look like God in experience. That there is a dimension of your lifting no matter how you pray and no matter how you fast. God must introduce men to your sphere to lift you. Now unbelievers know this. But many people in the body of Christ have ignored the ministry of men in an attempt to supposedly honor God. I came from a background where every time we're worshiping God, I we're told to ignore men. Don't worry about any man. And sometimes it was well-meaning. They meant it to say God is the ultimate answer. I agree. But hear me, brothers and sisters, without men in your life, prophecy will remain in the realm of the spirit forever. I assure you. The Bible talks about the utopian eunuch. That when he was on his way from worshiping in Jerusalem and he was going back, the spirit of God took a man, Philip, 
and he met him and when he was reading the messianic prophecy he said join this chariot and he told him he said who is this talking about and all of that and he said well i cannot accept some man teach me for god so loved men yet men hate men god is there loving men and doing his best to reach men and yet men have ignored men our prayer requests have passed us every day our answers have passed us every day our breakthroughs our liftings but because we do not understand this system of the kingdom we have been stagnated for a very long time destiny helpers please write this down destiny helpers are men and women anointed commissioned and authorized to hold your hand and help lift you to the next level of life destiny helpers are men and women anointed commissioned authorized to hold your hands and to lift you to the next level of life every realm you are praying for today someone is already there there is no realm that is empty your prayer request is on the table of somebody on earth today whether it is job whether it is business whether it is an opportunity it is breakthrough whatever it is and so when god wants to lift you and bring you to a position of influence in addition to intellectual prowess and all of these things he will begin to introduce you to strategic people some of these people are gatekeepers they are not all christians but they are gatekeepers and god himself recognizes their office and no, no matter what you do they are honored by him now this is a mystery please listen understand what i'm telling you there are four of these kinds of destiny help us and I want to share with you very briefly and then we are going to pray number one the first dimension of destiny help us that we will all need in our lives to rise to that position of influence that will help us fulfill our divine mandate they are called divine connectors divine connectors second Kings very quickly please chapter 5 divine connectors who are they ordinary people who do not have the power to change your life but they can connect you to who has the power to change your life they do not have the ability in themselves to help you please help us media five from verse one the bible talks about a man called naaman the captain of the syrian army and the bible says he was an honorable man because by him the lord had given deliverance so it was the Lord that gave him deliverance, yet he could not get healing. Look at your Bible. It was not the devil that gave him deliverance in war. God gave him deliverance in war. And yet the Bible says he was a leper. He was excelling in one area of his life, but there was this question mark in this area of his life. Number two, next verse. The Bible says the Syrians had gone out by company and brought away a captive out of the land of israel a little maid see the description now a little maid suggests gives an idea of a, a small girl who was just a captor from war and the bible says she waited on naaman's wife verse 3 and she said unto her mistress would god my lord were with the prophet that is in samaria for he would recover him of his leprosy that little girl one day while serving madame she said mommy I've been looking at your husband. I know this is not the best for him. Even though he's a great man, there is more he can get into. I don't have the power, but I know a prophet in Samaria. Let me tell you this. It takes the first key that you will need to receive from divine connectors is discernment. Because they come in forms that may not be easily receptive. Are we together now? It may be a newspaper seller. Who will just be holding a newspaper with your vacancy and he's just waving it at you and while you are laughing at the slippers he's wearing you are not seeing what god is showing you 
For the sake of your job, he made the traffic light to stop so that you can see discernment. This is why only humble people receive from these kinds of people. Sometimes it can be your little child and he comes to tap you and say, Daddy, pray. And you know that he's always throwing trantums, but this talk, the Holy Ghost inspired it. This one is not just a child talking. And that prayer will be what can save catastrophe that is coming in the future. When it has to do with divine connectors, God can use anybody to speak to you. Your gate man may be foolish for more than half of the year, but that very day, he will say at least something. I'm, I'm respectfully, I'm not, you know, he may be acting and you are always saying, oh, this foolish man, but that day, he can say, madam, uh, there's something I want to share with you and that can be the one idea. This pain you are going through like this. I once worked for another madam and there was a doctor that used to come and visit her. Would you want to see that doctor? And that's your miracle. For those who do not have discernment, you, let me tell you, according to the law of times and seasons and the law, the laws of God, the Bible says that time and chance happened to them all, whether you are born again or not. That means someone has come into your life sent by God that if you had the discernment, you would have seen what God is saying through them. Divine connectors. You will find them everywhere, even in this church. Who knows whether your neighbor is one? Are we together? Mm. The most powerful lesson on faith was taught me by our little children in the ministry. They come and they don't care whether you are tired. They don't care whether you have been preaching. Church starts for them after the grace. They come and stand and they can just say, Daddy, bend. I want to tell you something. And I'm like, ah! Somebody is joining the line to see me. And here comes this child, pushes everybody and commands me to bend because he wants to tell me to buy bobo or biscuit. And I'm saying, okay. <laughs> Do you know why? Since I called myself father, I must pay the price for carrying that name. So when the Bible says we have a father, I go back to God and say, God, I don't know who is on the queue, but I have come not to God. I have come to Father. It says when you pray, say Abba, Father. It's not just to pronounce the name Father. Come with this understanding that you are meeting a giver. Hallelujah. How many people have been saved because they could listen to supposedly non-entities. Please, I'd like you to leave this assembly today sensitive. Ready to see and learn from everything and everyone. Sometimes you can sit down and just watch two birds playing. And while you are watching them, suddenly you sense that there is an anointing on that scenario. And God says, I'm about to deliver your business. But watch, the strategy will not come from a lecture in a university. I am using inconsequential animals to show you something. Do you have the grace and the flexibility to receive the ministry of divine connectors? Because for many of us, until we see people who are great, we do not have regard and honor for people. You will miss so many things. Many of the people who will make you great are not great themselves, but they know those who are great. You must be sensitive. While you are looking at the corridors of power, be careful. The taxi man who carries you can share with you something that will change your life. Divine connectors. Ordinary people like that slave girl, but they have the power to connect you to great people. It is true. Number two, let's hurry up. Men of access and influence. This is the second category of destiny helpers that you need. Men of access and influence. Let me assure you in the name of honesty that there are times you do not have access to the gate. You will need someone who is already at the gate to speak for you. You may never have the luxury of defending yourself. 
You will only need somebody whose credibility has been established to speak for you. Many people do not know this in business. Many people do not know this in politics. Many people do not know this while rising. Building a track record for yourself sometimes will take your lifetime. You will need to convince someone who has a track record and leverage on his integrity and years of sacrifice to say, hear ye him. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. There are people today whose businesses can step into superior dimensions. There are people today who can be granted access to so many things at ease. Please do not neglect people of influence. Their voice has power. Their names are great. They hold keys in their hands and God can use them to open a door for you. Oh, this young man, you've been looking for a job. Okay, here is a little note. Go and give this person. Just tell them it's from me. And that's it. That note can work wonders in your hand. Do you know why it's difficult to receive from great men? Because many people have not studied the protocol of relating with the great. The dynamics of relating with great people is such that you must study. You must sustain the adaptability to great people are busy people. Great people sometimes can be arrogant people. Great people are people who will inconvenience you beyond your imagination. You do not relate with a great man at your terms. No. So if you, if you put your ego on the line, is it because you want to give me a job that you are wasting my time? Oh dear, you just finished your interview right there. Look at Elijah and Elisha. Do you know theologically speaking, Elijah was a temperous man. I'm not sure I want to work with that kind of person. An angry man. Just for disrupting his fellowship, fire burns you. What did Elisha endure to receive the double fold? Adaptation is proof of honor. Hallelujah. Greatness. You must trust God to have men and women of influence who can be able to speak for you. There are times that your level of growth would not have gotten to that dimension where you can confront the powers that be. You will need to leverage on the sacrifices and the credibility of people. There are many people who receive rewards in the Bible for the sake of others, not for their sake. Is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake, not for his sake? So it's time you begin to pray and say, Father, grant me the grace to honor every great man around me because I will not lie, I need their credibility. I need their credibility. There are dimensions I want to get into. Do you know it is amazing that the person you are seeking help from has a friend? And what if his friend likes you? Esther invited her man to the banquet too, even though she was going to kill him. Because even if it's for a short time, her man was still the king's right hand man. Ignoring her man to show that she was out to kill the Jews, she would have died like a chicken. So she said, Everybody is invited. Her man, you too, come. She honored him to his grave. You must receive grace. Some of you, after this conference right now, you may need to pick up your phone and find one of your uncle or someone that every time you call, you are saying, uncle, so are you trying to say you are not aware there's COVID-19? You see, that kind of attitude of entitlement is a very dangerous attitude. I'm sorry, but I will say it. Forgive me, but it's true. You cannot constitute an inconvenience to great people and claim you are a stakeholder in their success because of relationship or bloodline. No, you must sustain the intelligence. Auntie, this is to appreciate you. Thank you. It's been, it's been five years since you blessed me, but it's still like yesterday. I am grateful. Thank you very much. That they didn't reply does not mean they didn't see it. 
You are not the only one reaching them. But something about your consistency and your sincerity will stand out. And you may think they are not observing you until the day they send for you. They can bring 12 years in one hour and bless you. Listen, let me tell you something. Great people do not always respond to you. But the day they do, oh, you will be glad you stayed. You will be glad you stayed. You are trusting that he will give you a house rent, whereas he has five estates. One day he just looks at you and says, come with your wife. You think he's coming to quarrel you. As soon as you enter, he gives you a key and says, that one at that side, please. Whereas you were trusting God for money to pay rent and keep suffering again. And God just used the man to wipe your tears. Please, I hope you know that I'm not being sarcastic. Listen. Hardship is not a good thing. And as soon as you can get out of it, trust God for grace to get out of it. These are the systems that bring us out. Please do not ignore great people. Whether in this church or anywhere. Do not... Resist that temptation of trivializing their sacrifice. Don't get into that sociological thing of speaking and saying, is it because God has blessed you? Why didn't he bless you too? Because the same Lord is rich unto all. Remember, I told you to pray before I start teaching. I told you to pray. Don't blame me for what this is doing to you. I asked you to pray. We, we, we said we will receive grace from God. This can be a word for someone right now. Why am I praying and yet I'm not rising? I am 50 years. I am 55. And my life is almost an embarrassment. And God says, hear my servant. This is what you have done to everybody. You have called everybody your classmate. You have called everybody your colleague. There is no classmate in greatness. You must submit to greatness and open up yourself to receive. Don't say I was in the university with this. I was this. This person that was not in. He was my younger brother's friend. I agree with you, but it's not profiting you now. Jesus had to submit to John the Baptist, even though he was the word of life. John said, no, 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 I know you, you are a great man. He said, suffer it to be so, otherwise my ministry will be destroyed. You are the spiritual voice in town. I can't ignore your relevance and rise. How many preachers will want to excel in this city and come and see someone like our mother? And just say, ah, it's just our mother. And just, and go around and be suffering as if God didn't call you. Please listen to what I'm telling you. How many people want to start a business and they see someone already thriving there and they just ignore him, they move around and, you know? No. You've heard my story. One time I was traveling somewhere and... A very great man in this nation was seated. He was sitting on my seat. And um, one of the cabin crew women wanted to walk him. And I rebuked her. I said, don't, don't try that. This man has achieved more than I'll ever achieve in my life. Don't ever. If there is no seat, send me anywhere. I just want this thing to move and land me wherever I will land. The man did not even know I was discussing about him to say thank you. But God saw that honor. Who have you dishonored to your detriment? Whose greatness have you trivialized as if God just helped them? Nigerians, hear me. We are making a big mistake. Africa, hear me. We are making a big mistake. There are people who have labored and deserve no matter what level they deserve their due honor. And dishonoring them to prove a point will cost you supervised by God. Someone will insult his CEO, insult his boss, go and sit down and tear him down and yet be praying secretly for the same company. You want to have the same corporation. You have already killed the door for reproducing that same result. Men of influence, when God taught me this, 
I developed a healthy respect for successful people. Oh, Apostle Joshua Selman, he's just lucky. Just a young man that God is using. Every generation, God raises people. You think like that and see whether God, I will not criticize you, but I will never prophesy to you. Brothers and sisters, from this place, make up your mind. Make up your mind. Some of them are even your parents. They gave you a leverage you never would have gotten. And yet we are the first to criticize them. They were not serious Christians. They, yes, I agree. But with what they know, they made sure you didn't live a very bad life. Have you gone to honor them and bless them? These are the systems of greatness. Number three, the third group of people you will need in your life are gifted people. There are times you need more than divine connectors. The men of influence will give you access to their wings and the leverage of their credibility. But you need gifted people, those who can get the job done. The best corporations in the world have mastered this. They will pay the price to get the gifted people and triple their salary. Instead of wasting their resources on different people who continue to become leakages to their profits. Gifted people. Sometimes you just need people in your life that can get the job done. Sincere people are wonderful but it takes more than sincerity to produce results. Some of us, our lives are full of many sincere people. They will never destroy you, but you are also not moving forward. You need to trust God for gifted people. In your company, gifted people. Your workers, gifted people. Your staff, gifted people. Skillful and talented people. They use their gifts, their skill, their talents to help you achieve God's purposes. It's important. There have been people, even in business and in life, they may not be exceptionally smart as individuals, but they are surrounded by phenomenal people. And I pray that in the name of Jesus, especially for every man in this church, that God will surround you with gifted people. Their job is to make our work easy. Imagine a young man who forgets every instruction you give him. Oh, do this and he says, ah, I just forgot. How old are you? 22. You see, that, that is he's not a gifted person. He may be a sincere person. But it may not work that way. You need to trust God for gifted people. Gifted people in your life. Lord, bring gifted people in my business. Bring gifted people in this ministry. Bring gifted people in my corporation. Bring gifted people everywhere. When a nation has gifted people, it will thrive. When an institution has gifted people, it will do well. When a ministry has gifted people, it will do well. Number four. The fourth set of destiny helpers that you will need in your life, they are called burden bearers. Mm. These are trusted and faithful people who will stay with you through storms. They will stay with you through challenges until your glory is revealed. Ruth chapter 1. Please give us verse 16. No matter who you are in this life, times will come and days will come, storms will rise, challenges will come individually, corporately, and so on and so forth. You will need people in your life who can cry with you. You will need people in your life who can rejoice with you. You will need people in your life who are not using you as a ladder to achieve their purposes. The Bible says, Ruth, remember the story of Ruth and Naomi and Opa, her sister, her sister-in-law. Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee or return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go. And whither thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, 
and thy God, my God. Let me tell you this. One of the most painful things for any leader is to get to a point where your life is shaken and find out that everybody you've labored for for decades and years were only looking for things to go. Look at Jesus. My question is when Jesus was carrying the cross, where were the people who ate the bread? Remember those people that ate the bread? They even said, we'll make you king the next day. Please be careful when people are clapping for you. They are only clapping for their bread through you. There are few people in their life who can covenant and say, if you are dying, I will die with you here. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes, sir. Most leaders die of heart attack because of the sheer pain. Having in, they raise many people in their own homes. There are many of you here, as I'm talking to you, you have been in pain for years. You raise many people in your home. They didn't even know the difference between them and your children. And today, those people have the effrontery to start to stand and speak evil and speak ill. It can be painful. But there are a group of people sent by God. They come into your life not looking for your glory. They come into your life the Bible says this man came and met David in the cave of Adullam. David was running away from Saul for his life. They would have met him and said, what a weak man. You call yourself a warrior. And yet they looked at him and they said, we will make sure you rise and become king over us. So even in that your state, we have taken you as king over us. How many people have run away from CEOs because their companies crashed. They were there to serve, oh, our great company. And suddenly they hear that things are going down and they fold themselves and run in a heartbeat. How many people serve men with power and authority hoping to rise? And one day you hear that this man has, has been diagnosed of an infirmity and they fold their hands and run away. This has happened in politics. This has happened in government. This has happened in ministry. This has happened in business. This has even happened in family life. But that God will surround your life with people today who you can sleep with both of your eyes closed because you trust that they are in your life to die with you. They are not people who stand with you. They are people who can die with you. Are we blessed? But the first prayer there is to not pray that they come. Is to pray that you become one. Who will now come to you and be a burden bearer when you are not one? Many of you have heard me say it. By the grace of God, mommy, I made up my mind that outside of being a man of God, my life's goal is to become a shoulder for people. I am that one person who when you are crying, I can be, if I cannot clean your tears, at least I can cry with you. It is so comforting to have people in your life who are completely not needing your greatness. Oh, what is wrong? I was just told that I have cancer. Hey, where is your faith? And then next time you call them, they say, I'm busy. No. Cancer? Then me too, I have cancer. We are dying here. You know why I'm saying this? So that God will grant us grace to coordinate our energy and not waste our time and our lives on people that at the end you think you have invested in pillars, not known that you have invested in chaff. Hallelujah. How many of you today, God forbid, but let's assume that as mommy is standing right now, God forbid. Let's assume that her leg just starts paining her. And she said, how many of you can say, mommy, I will carry you on my shoulder? Don't be too quick to say, me, oh, it's hard to be a burden bearer. Our daddy was sharing something that touched me. Sir, you see why your message really touched me? When he was talking about his mother. Do you know what it means to be paralyzed from neck down? Think of the, 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 the maintenance and yet, for others, they will leave. offense will not even let them preach Christ again. 
Joseph of Arimathea carried that cross. And he says, I may not die for the world, but I can help you. God has brought a few of these people in my life. And I can tell you, it's a gift to have people. And I pray for you, may that burden bearer be your wife, oh. Or may that burden bearer be your husband too. Because if they are not, no matter who you are, times will come in your life where your faith will be challenged. People have been betrayed by their business partners. They sat together, they ate together. Do you know, in my opinion, I believe that one of the best person to Jesus was Judas. Judas was not a wicked man. Judas was just a selfish man. He wanted to use Jesus to do business. Because at the, it just that it backfired. Judas could not use the money to spend it. The people who were wicked that were forgotten to talk about were those who came for his crusades. They ate the bread. They saw the miracle. Where was Jairus' daughter when Jesus was on his way to where were all these people? Where was the woman at the well? And yet he was on his way to that lonely cross. Crucify him! Jesus was looking at him. Yes, you are seeing me crucify him. <laughs> Let his blood be on our children. But you ate my bread. Crucify him! You think I liked you? I only heard that a celebrity was in town and I came to eat bread. Let me submit to you sincerely. Most of the people in your life are looking for their greatness through you. It doesn't mean they are bad. It's just the reality of living in today's world. And the day they find an option or they do not find you fit to provide that in a heartbeat, Knowing that already helps you to shield your heart to know who is worthy of your commitment. Because we make the mistake of investing our all in just everybody arbitrarily. No. Save yourself that pain and find people who by the Spirit are true burden bearers. Because there are. Don't get used to the disappointment and the betrayal and the pain caused by people in our sociological sphere and conclude that everybody is like that. My goodness. I have seen people in this life and I believe there are many of them in this church who have that dexterity. They can say, look, I, I will stand. I will stand with you. We will cry together. Oh, I just lost five family members. And he's asking you all kinds of unwise questions. I came from a background where my local assembly, my local church, they didn't really understand the things of the spirit so much. But if someone had a bereavement or something, in less than two hours, you will see a group of women singing choruses, some with rice on their head, some with whatever, marching, and they will sleep in that house sometimes for days, comforting the woman. But many of us today, we don't want to be associated with pain. When someone receives a promotion, we are there. But when someone is in a position of embarrassment, uh, I'm a bit busy. We always do not want to be associated with pain. Unfortunately, if you are not there with me at the place of pain, don't expect to be invited at my dinner table. This is the reason why when people rise, they shockingly go back to their memory and look when i was crying whose voice did i hear crying with me and they said if you cried with me there are people today who have used their being burden bearers as a stream of income that is the only thing keeping them today the person they cried with and helped vowed and said if god ever lifts me you must eat bread from my table we have to pray that this mandate we are talking about is only achieved through influence. And that this dominion and influence has pillars. When you see certain people rise in life, it's not necessarily a measure of their competence. 
is not necessarily a measure of their personal intelligence, but that some of these people have been wise enough to cry with great people before they became great. Do you know the prayer you have to pray? Father, lead me to cry with somebody who is about to be great tomorrow. I may not know now, but Lord, let my tears be part of the, his history. Please listen. Listen to me. This is a call for action. This is more than just a message. It is a call for action. You will be surprised that some of you can make up your mind and say, I may not have access to some of the influential people in this church, but I will write their name on my prayer altar. And every day as I lift my voice to God, I am saying, Lord, I'm praying for our uncle. I'm praying for... They may not see you, but the justice system of God will fish you out one day. Hallelujah. Do not rejoice when great people are in pain. It's not a testimony. Can you be there? Some of us today, our parents and loved ones are sick. We have not spoken to them in months because we think our mama is always demanding money. I agree, she would have killed you as a baby. The mere fact that she gave birth to you, you have an eternal debt towards her. This is why the heavens of many are closed though. It's not always just about demons and attacks. These are the systems of the kingdom. I heard a story that Miles Munro gave. One of his deacons who became a very strong man in church. This man was always beating and frustrating his wife. And then he would run to church. Or I think it was the other way around. The man hated God and all of that. He would beat the wife. The wife was in church. And the man hated church and hated pastors. And one day he reached out to her. And he said what's the problem and she said my husband hates church he hates pastors he hates everybody and he said why he said because i don't have time for him and everything is church and miles monroe looked at her and wrote a note he said go back home i said sorry sir you are driving me from church he said go back home go and tell your husband that your pastor sent you back home to come and take care of him now listen so he went back, she went back home and told the man. And the man said, what did you say? Your pastor sent you to come back and attend to me. He first kept quiet. You know how men are. They won't talk what they are thinking. After a few days, he now called and said, okay, uh, who did you say that your pastor is? And then she followed him to the church and sat at the back. And Dr. Munro came and greeted him and said, thank you, sir. And said, wow. Eventually, cut the long story short, he became a deacon in that church. Because he said, I wanted a pastor who could teach a woman not to neglect her responsibility in the name of spirituality. And now I found one. Now that man at that point was a burden bearer. He was willing to lose his membership to make sure a man's home is restored. Can you go that far? Can your ego go that far? Can you sacrifice that much? There are times in your life that you will have to help even undeserving people because you are just being a burden bearer. It may not happen always, but one day you just have to close your eyes to say, if I depend on your being responsible, your wife will die of hunger. So for the sake of your children, even though you are not willing to hear, still take. Has God spoken to anybody here today? We are going to pray. Strengthen my spiritual connection. Lord, help me to contend for transformation, to sustain superior belief systems. Help me to be productive and to be exceptional. And then, oh God, help me to see that the ministry of men might be the key that I've been ignoring. Please lift up your voice in one minute and let's pray. We're wrapping up. Lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice and pray. 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, please, we are going to pray and commit all the men in this church. You are going to pray. Whether it's your father, whether it's your husband, whether it's your uncle, you are going to pray for every man. And say, Father, in the name of Jesus, we drive the plagues of darkness. Satan, you will not afflict the men in this church. They are mighty men of valor. Lift your voice and intercede in one minute. For every man in this assembly, the anchor men's fellowship. Do you believe in the power of prayer? Shabakato sabranda gada sheleke te parusa siada baladash. Nanta kaparato sedele katabaria tagazida. In the name of Jesus, we speak over every man. In the name of Jesus, we declare over every man. Shalandas kabarato sazige debeletus. Kaparus kabada shalandas kabalande sebele katu sabrahas kadebeletus every man in the name of jesus we bring before you their families we bring before you their finances we declare that the rod of the wicked will not rest upon the lot of the righteous let they dip, lest they dip their hands in iniquity we declare that their children are well taught of the lord and great is their peace in the name of jesus every man in this church is rising from glory to glory you will preserve them, oh God. You will honor them. Pray over their influence. We declare in the name of Jesus. Increase their greatness. Comfort them on every side. Increase them politically. Increase them financially. Increase them in their career. In the name of Jesus, the Christ of God. Increase them in their health. hallelujah we're going to pray he said i desire to come to you even i paul once and again but satan hindered us we're going to contend with every power fighting the destiny of any man in this church whether it is the power of the grave whether it is the power of foundations please lift your voice in one minute and cry to the god of heaven in the name of jesus we contend with forces by the power of the holy spirit that every force that wants to reduce every noble man in this church to become an object of shame to become weak and mediocre we stand in the name of jesus with the leadership of the anchor men's fellowship and the pastorate of this church we declare that those chains are broken we declare in the name of jesus the christ of god rising from glory to glory rising from power to power hallelujah please don't be tired i apologize for the time we're wrapping up joshua said as for me and my house not you alone me and my house Every man here is going to pray for you and everybody within your sphere. Those who are not saved, they must be saved. Lord, I will not train armed robbers. Our mothers and the women can also pray. My womb will not give birth to someone who will be a disaster to society. Please lift your voice and pray. In the name of Jesus, that everyone who is under my leadership, I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, I will raise noble men. I will raise excellent men, exceptional men. I will raise gatekeepers, captains of industry, men and women whose voices will speak the purposes of God over a territory, over a dispensation, over a generation. Lift your voice and pray. Pray for your children. Pray for those under your care. I rebuke the spirit of rebellion I rebuke the spirit of laziness in the name of Jesus from the least to the greatest I speak over their lives I forbid them from being weak 
it will never be that I've labored in vain over every one of them. Pray for their salvation. Bring them, oh God, to the saving knowledge of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Final prayer point, and then we are done. You're going to pray. Lord, show me my geography of influence. Listen, there is nothing more disastrous than escorting people in the journey of life and not knowing where you are standing. The Bible says, and Lot went with Abraham. Lot did not have any personal program for his own life. When Lot left Abraham, we, the next time we hear about him, he's in Sodom about to die. The Bible says, without vision, the people perish. First to the men, that includes the young men, and then every other person. Listen, your prosperity and your relevance is not everywhere. You must know the geography. He said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. There are some of you who right now are in career, but your place of relevance is in politics and government. You will never find fulfillment. That cry, you will keep having dreams of yourself in government and there will be no rest. Listen, please hear me. Do you know that you don't succeed for yourself? The only gift you can give yourself is fulfillment. Fulfillment is your personal gift to yourself. Fulfillment is the satisfaction derived from knowing that you have spent your life effectively serving the purposes of the kingdom and being a blessing to humanity. It is the only gift you can give yourself. Because for many of us, we are wasting time swinging like a pendulum from one geography to another searching for relevance. We are going to pray. Lord, I believe that there is a definition. For some of us, God is going to say, start a company, start an NGO, raise people. He will commit to you certain things. For some of you, God is going to say, politics, do not allow decadence to happen on that mountain. For some of you, it's the area of education. God is going to say, mentor and raise people. Please lift your voice and pray. Show me, oh God. Show me, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, my sincere apologies. The Lord just put it in my heart to just one prayer, one prayer request that I think it may not have been good justice if we don't say that. My life changed. I'm a young man. But my life changed, sir, when I watched the obituary of a man many years ago. And in five minutes, that man's life was compressed in an advert. I don't know where they got the photo of him when he was small. You know the photo of our parents, that old one that you print in a dark room. And then they showed him when he was maybe about a teenager. Then they showed him probably in his mid-twenties, now married with the wife. Then they showed him maybe in his forties. Then maybe, I think he died at maybe 80 something. And then they showed him when he was now sick. And then they showed him during the final hours. Everything was compressed in a slide. And I watched a man's life of 80 something years in five minutes. Tears rolled out of my eyes that day and the Spirit of God, the scripture that came to me was, Oh, teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. It had such an impact in my life that in our school of ministry, I designed a curriculum that deals with effective living under personal transformation. Because in all your doing, if you do not live your life effectively, there is a real problem. 
that there are four stages in any man's life. The first is the learning stage. The first 25 years of your life. It is expected that at that point in your life, you should have gotten born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, and you should have started learning the principles of the kingdom. That is the phase of your life you can make mistakes and go scot free. The afternoon stage of your life is the next, or the execution stage, is the next 25 years of your life. That is supposed to be the prime of your impact in most cases under normal circumstances then the third is the stage of legacy the next 25 years that is when you begin to build institutions around your convictions you write books that document your persuasions that is when you begin to turn back and mentor a generation out of your own story and your own pain and the last season is the last 25 years of your life it's called the season of rest. Doesn't mean death, rest. Every one of us here, whether you like it or not, you are in one of these seasons. And whether you are prepared or not, time is passing. Last prayer point. Lord, I want to live effectively. I want to live effectively. Let me spend my remaining days effectively. Please lift your voice and pray. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before I go back to my seat, I want to sincerely appreciate the Anchor Men's Fellowship. I do not take it for granted the time you have given and the trust to be able to bring God's word. And I hope that this that we have communicated alongside that which our Father has brought and many others that will come, I trust that it will add to strengthening the men and the membership and even the leadership in this church. It is my desire that God will continue to take everyone in this church and every anchor man from glory to glory. In Jesus' name. okay just please while standing I've, I've just been given um two three minutes um usually for those of you who follow my meetings know that it usually doesn't end this quiet uh you know having to minister to people but now we're restrained by many things number one the context of the meeting and then number two the covid situation so that uh this place does not become unruly but um our mother did request yesterday that it would be fair to just speak over people i believe in miracles i believe in signs and wonders i believe that we serve a god who can intercept the activities of men and reach out to people and we just have two three minutes i know that there are many of us here carrying burdens sicknesses there are men here carrying all kinds of stress the devil is out to kill men choking them with all kinds of burdens but i also believe in the power of the holy spirit <laughs> there are miracles in the name of jesus there are liftings in the name of jesus there is healing in the name of jesus and he will break every chain. Now, if you are sick in your body, I'd like you to just lay your hands there as a point of contact. Any part of your body. If it's a part of your body you cannot touch, just lay your hands on your chest as a point of contact. High blood pressure, stroke, cancer, blood diseases and every kind of evil report agree with me as i pray in the name of jesus in the name of jesus right now i rebuke the spirit of infirmity i decree and declare over the anchors men fellowship over family worship center 
and the body of Christ following in the name of Jesus be healed. Be healed from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. I rebuke high blood pressure. I rebuke stroke. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke every growth in your body. Everything that has not been planted by my father, I command it to leave your body now. Every medical report that is a death sentence before you right now, in the name of Jesus, the Christ of God, I command that it bows to the name of Jesus. Migraine headaches, heart palpitations, in the name of Jesus, be healed. Every blood-related condition be healed right now. If there is any mother in this place, any woman here, or any family that is yet to enjoy and rejoice over the fruit of the womb, I stand here and I prophesy in the name of Jesus, according to the time of life, I veto whatever medical report, and I decree and declare you carry your children in the name of Jesus. Memory loss, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Eye condition, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And Father, we use our uncle and our father as a point of contact to lift up the nation as we pray over the COVID situation. That Lord, in addition to all of the labor, the policies, and, and all the things that they continue to put in to see that our nation is eventually safe and free. We agree as the church and we lend our voices as a contribution. We declare in the name of Jesus, COVID-19, your days are numbered. In the name of Jesus, we decree and declare that not only will the curve be flattened, it will go down. We pray for all of the agencies around the world who continue to labor to build permanent solutions and lord it doesn't matter how the devil has gone around this we declare that in the end your people will be safe they will be free and normalcy will return in the name of jesus we pray for all who continue to labor risking their lives in the name of jesus may the mercy of god meet with them and protect them and i pray for everyone who has been grounded in this church I speak to you by the spirit of the living God and by the voice of prophecy. Arise and shine for your time is come. Every position that is yours that is being contended with, I prophesy that it will be overturned, overturned until what is rightfully yours comes to you. In the name of Jesus, any man holding what is yours, I declare a release of it to you now. In the name of Jesus, anyone here that the spirit of death is following, to say that you will not finish this year well in the name of jesus i curse that spirit over your life i curse it over your family in the name of jesus i declare by the spirit that everyone who is under this spiritual covering is protected you are blessed in the day and blessed in the night the rod of the wicked will not fall upon your lot in the name of jesus everybody trusting god in this church especially the men for a job or a means of livelihood i agree with you between now and the end of the year may my god surprise you in the name of jesus and anyone who is due for promotion i declare may god cause the eyes of your lifters to see you may god bring these strategic helpers to your life you go from glory to glory and every one of us will be hello Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.